Well, could it be you? Have you ever thought God might be calling you to a ministry? How would you recognise God's call? Uh, I couldn't say that there was any blinding light or anything like that. I've never never had that experience. Uh, but I think it was just um, a, a quiet um, influencing of my uh, sort of inner being and, and, and consciousness and uh, maybe my conscience, I don't know, I'm not quite sure about that. But um, uh, uh, there, was, there was definitely a strong feeling that um, this was the way in which I had to go and I interpreted that. I began to feel that there was, there was more to this than just leading worship on a Sunday morning. That, that God was definitely asking something of me. I had no training whatever in theology. I was already approaching my 50th birthday and it seemed to me very much too late in the day. The call to start with, um, I felt that probably I wasn't good enough, which, which is a, I think is a fairly natural thing to feel, that God really couldn't want to use me in this way. There are far better people for this job than me. Well, it certainly wasn't the money. <laughs> um, and uh, I can only believe that, um, that God had honed in on me. Uh, goodness knows why. But uh, I can only believe that he had honed in on me, that he wanted me uh, for a specific uh, work of his, and he wasn't going to let me go. And um, I'd been helping within our junior church and doing quite a bit of work with children and young people and somebody just sort of suggested to me one day that perhaps I was being called to local preaching um, and I laughed and carried on working with the children <laughs> um, but people didn't leave it alone you know? I mean they, they were they were quite quite good really I mean, it didn't it wasn't sort of putting me under a lot of pressure but but there would be sort of hints were dropped. Uh, I was invited to a, a local preachers meeting, um, invited to a, a recruitment day for local preachers, um, all of which I suppose gave me some information, sort of practical type information that I went away and pondered about. And, and it, it sort of led me to a point where I thought, well, perhaps I need to be thinking seriously about this because these things just wouldn't be happening all the time if there wasn't something behind it. I mean, I'm sure other people's experiences go on for a lot longer, but I felt like I'd been exploring this issue for a long time and batting backwards and forwards. Yes, I do feel a call. No, I don't. I don't want to do it. Leave me alone. Um, I finally I had a sense of giving in about it all, really. It's a deep down feeling, and it's a feeling which is so strong that, that you can't resist it, and you know it's right. I can only say that it was a very gradual realisation, but, uh, but it came to be a very strong conviction. So does God only call special people? I would say you don't have to be special, but there again you could argue that in God's sight we're all special. I think God can use anyone whom he chooses. It's his choice and that's what matters. But I don't think you need any special qualities. God wants a range of people to serve him in ministry. I felt that God was calling me to show to people that you don't, you don't, you're just ordinary people and that everyone has their weaknesses and their faults and you know insecurities about different things but um, God can use you nonetheless. The church needs different personalities of people one of the men, Anglicans, that I trained with had very little education, in fact. But it was quite obvious that he was going to be powerfully used. First of all, you need to sense a call from God. You need to have that call tested, though, by the various councils of the church through the processes. Uh, but I don't think you need any special qualities. God wants a range of people to serve him in ministry. The incredible thing is that he calls perfectly ordinary people to his ministry. And um, as I said earlier, um, I think uh, I was pretty amazed that he should have honed in on me. So we have seen how just ordinary people are called to a ministry. Now we all have an image of full-time stipendary ministry of word and sacrament in our minds. However, there are many variations. 
Helen is a part-time stipendary minister. Sheila has just retired from a non-stipendary ministry. And Gareth is a lay person who is training to be a lay preacher. But I just felt that I was being called to minister to people at the level of word and the sacrament of communion especially. Um, and it's hard to explain because it is a, a moment where you're involved in mystery. And that means that I'm part time, but I'm quite happy really just to be dealing with one church. I think if I was full time, then I'd be involved in another one and then you're facing different pressures then. I chose non-stipendiary for various practical reasons. Firstly, in those days, if you wanted to be a stipendiary minister, you had to go away to college for three years and train. Well, with children of eight and ten, that is just not an option. Secondly, because of my husband's work, I knew I would not be able to accept a call anywhere in the country, so I was geographically limited to where I could serve. Thirdly, I only wanted to work part-time, because even as teenagers, um, children need you and can be quite demanding in many ways so I didn't want to do a full-time job so it was more practical reasons for being non-stipendiary because I would have more flexibility to work when I wanted and where I wanted. Your local church could recognise you as a lay preacher if they're happy with what you were doing but, but the wider church would not recognise you as a lay preacher without doing the formal training that the church sets down? Um, I didn't become a lay preacher until I was in my mid-thirties, by which time I'd left the Anglican Church and joined the United Reformed Church. The TLS course has given me an awful lot. I'm a tutor with training for learning and serving. I have had one tutee who's, uh, who's completed the course. I have another one who's coming to the end and I've got another one that will be starting with me in April. Um, obviously it's given me a greater Bible knowledge um, which which helps when preparing sermons and, and leading worship. Um, it's essential in, in, in giving a wide variety of sermons um, but also it's given me, given me a lot more than that. It's given me confidence um, which, which, is, which is vital. Um, it's given me the self-confidence to believe that I can actually do it um, but it's also given me shared experiences. I've been able to share with other people from other backgrounds, which helps me to realise that not every church is in the same situation our, the church I go to is, which gives me different things to draw on. Um, but it's also given me a lot of personal spiritual growth as well. Um, I've really been able to explore my faith and what my faith means to me. Now, so far we have only heard from people called to the traditional ministries of word and sacrament and lay preaching. There are other ministries, and one example is a pioneering ministry supported by the United Reformed Church and called Church Related Community Work, which, as its name suggests, is aimed directly at work within the community. Here is Dave Twine. CRCW stands for Church Related Community Work. Um, and a church-related community worker carries out one of the ministries within the United Reformed Church. The way I felt called um, to the ministry of church-related community work wasn't straightforward. First of all, I felt called to a form of ministry, but was convinced that God had got it wrong because there was no way I would ever preach or, or, or be that sort of minister. However, I went to an inquirer's conference to find out about the different ministries within the United Reformed Church. And after that, I thought I'd be a non-stipendiary minister, uh, maybe specialising in, in youth work. A year later, um, I looked back and saw the, the path that my life had taken and realised that through some voluntary work I was involved with, um, with working with homeless people, with some youth work, that really the ministry that I was being called to was that of church-related community work. I don't think that you have to be someone very special to be a CRCW. I think God can call all people to different forms of ministry. 
Um, I think that you have to be willing to learn special skills. Um, I think that um, you have to develop an understanding uh, and an empathy with other people. Um, but I firmly believe that when God calls people, he also equips people. Um, and I also believe that, that the ministries that people carry out are, are varied um, and not always just within church offices. For me, the values of the Kingdom of God are very much about um, turning our preconceptions and our ideas of power upside down so that those who are least heard should have their voice heard. Um, those who we don't think have anything to offer, we recognise the gifts that they have and we also try to change the structures that keep those who have having things and enabling power and wealth to be redistributed more fairly. Um, those who are called to the Ministry of CRCW are usually people who um, have quite a strong sense of what their faith means, the way that that means that they need to uh, work with others to change the way things are. Not to work to propping up the status quo, but trying to uh, bring about change so that the kingdom values, the values of God are brought about here and now in this world, in our local community. As we have seen, a calling to ministry comes in many, many forms. It may be experienced as a deep down feeling or a gradual realization. We've also heard that God calls just ordinary folk to a wide variety of ministries. Now the United Reformed Church believes in the ministry of all believers. That means that you are not restricted to the ministries represented in this video. There are many, many more. We all have our own ministry and God needs you to fulfill the ministry he is calling you to. So it could be you.